to CST Gaming Lab. Do it yourself. That's right. You heard it right. Lab. Do it yourself. I'm introducing this new uh, uh, playlist or channel or yeah, more of a playlist than anything else. Uh, where I'll be showing you um, how I sometimes make my own stuff um, because I don't want to go out and spend all kinds of money. And you'll be surprised how extremely easy it is to do some of the stuff if you have what you need <clears throat> already in your uh, toolbox um, in order to be able to accomplish this. Um, <clears throat> that is how you are going to be able to spend very little money or a lot less than what people will charge you to get certain things um, if you have already what you need to be able to perform this task, like I said before. So, um, without any further ado, let's get right to it. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to um, make your own Eaton Fuller shifter, uh, whether it's a 10, 13, or 18 speed, whatever, um, or a 12 plus 2 for those European trucks, or 16 speed. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is how you're going to accomplish this um, to make your ATS and ETS experience a lot more realistic and the way it should be <clears throat> so I've decided to do this for you guys and uh, show you how I have accomplished uh, this task uh, and like I said before there's some tools and some stuff that you need to already have because if you go out and you need to buy certain tools to be able to perform this then obviously the price is gonna go up um, and depending on what you buy it might go up <clears throat> a lot more than what it would cost for you to buy one of these already made by somebody and uh, by all means, before we even start, I'm not trying to take anything away from those people that do sell this this kind of products. Uh, there is time involved. There's uh, there's labor involved. Um, so um, I think what they are charging is somewhat decent. I think they could be charging uh, <laughs> probably less than than what they do. Uh, but again, you know, they are putting in the time. Um, they are putting in the effort. Uh, so there is that labor involved. And, you know, not too many people buy this stuff because it's got to be the ETS, ATS lover that plays the game on a daily basis and goes out and spends, you know, $160 on, on, on a little USB joystick type deal um, to be able to, you know, uh, bring a, a, a bigger and better experience into the game for himself. Um, so and they don't sell a lot so they gotta jack the price up so when they sell that one that one piece um uh, you know they're making money um because i'm telling you right now if you do it yourself and you already have the tools that you need you're not gonna spend no more than 50 bucks 50 dollars that's right 50 dollars to make something like this rather than 160 or more depending on what you get from uh some people but like i said um if you'd rather pay that extra money and have that the thing already all done and and ready to plug in and play then do so if you don't have that extra money and you would like to tackle this yourself it's very simple so uh let's let's go over what you need to buy <clears throat> to be able to accomplish this first and foremost you need a ethan full shifter uh that has a wrench paddle lower and upper wrench and a splitter gear splitter to switch your gear from low to high so lower and upper range so if you have an 18 speed transmission on the lower range you'll have uh, first second third and fourth and then you can split each gear to you know one low uh, one low one high two low two high and so on and so forth and then you go into the upper range where you have your fifth sixth seventh and eighth gear and again splitting those gears as well um, that simple um, it takes a little bit used to getting used to when you play the game but once you have a down pad uh, and you, you'll be driving a truck just like a real truck driver does um, not much to it but let's go ahead and get to what materials uh, or accessories you need to be able to accomplish this first and foremost you need to buy this shifter now this shifter this particular one that you see it is an 18 speed uh, Aiton Fuller shifter nub and it is the uh, um, air compressed uh, activated one so it's got airlines that plug into this and it works with air compressed air um, 
but um, that's not in our case. We're gonna make it all electronic. Um, but the reason, the 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 difference between the 18 speed, the 13 speed, and the 10 speed is is the following. An 18 speed obviously is gonna be just like this. It's gonna have your, pa your paddle in front, and then it's gonna have your splitter on the side, and it's gonna be gray in color. That tells you that it's an 18 speed transmission. If you see the one with the red, that's a 13 speed uh, transmission. Um, the difference between this and the red is that the red will not allow you to um, split gears in the lower range. So when your pedal is down, there is a little plastic piece in this in this splitter on the inside that prevents you from splitting the gears. Um, but there's ways around that, and I'll, and I'll talk to you in a little bit. And then you have your 10-speed transmission uh, nub, which only has your pedal. That's it. No splitter. So depending on what you're trying to do, <clears throat> you can either go with just a 10 speed or uh, 13 or 18 speed. Now, if you want to do this project and you want to get 18 speed out of it, you can even buy the one with the red um, splitter uh, uh, paddle over here. And there's a way to actually modify a hit on the inside and make it work. It's just two little tabs on the inside that, that prevent this from going back and forth. What you would do is just file those and that's going to allow you to go ahead and split your gears. No, 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 nothing big to it. I'll show you what I'm talking about exactly once we get inside this thing. But first thing you need to do is obviously uh, buy this. And I bought this from uh, Amazon. Uh, you can even find it on eBay. All you got to do is search for Ethan Fuller shifter knob, 18, 13, 10 speed, whatever. Um, and uh, th there's all kinds of stuff. Now they can get pricey, so always look for. It doesn't have to be the, the you know a genuine one, but the, like this one is not Ethan Fuller. This is a genuine World of American Parts, whatever. It, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Some of the some of them are better quality. Some of them are not. Get the cheapest one you can get. It's for your game. It's not for for a real truck. So who cares, right? As long as it works and it's got what you need, that's all you care about. Um. I bought this one for, and I'm a round up, okay? Uh, it was a little cheaper than 30 bucks, but I paid 30 bucks with shipping. So it was like 29.95, whatever, 29.97. So 30 bucks. So this thing, I bought it for 30 bucks. Uh, and we'll do the math in a little bit. So that's what you need, 30 bucks here. Now, the other thing that you need is a board to make it all work. Now it could be an Arduino board, it could be a generic joystick board, it could be something else. Uh, now those could get pricey, depend, uh, pricey depending on what you get. And what I mean by pricey is if you get like a micro Arduino board, that's the one you can actually put inside here to conceal it so you can't see it. Um, those can get upwards to like 30 bucks. So um, I wouldn't suggest that because you can get the same results by buying a generic USB board uh, and you're not going to pay no more than $10 for it. And this is what I got. This is your USB uh, joystick your generic USB joystick board okay uh, your power USB it comes with the USB cable that plugs in the ear which plugs into your computer okay uh, and then it's got all these inputs for all your controls so in this case with this I'm gonna be using two possibly three so you're gonna have your paddle uh, uh, for the lower and upper wrench you're gonna have your splitter to split this gear that's two and this which i've used before actually i'm just redoing it because i didn't like the way it was done and one of the wires were touching the aluminum piece inside it was was causing uh loose signals so I'm, I'm redoing it and while i'm redoing it i'm gonna show you guys how to do it um so three altogether if you want to put the uh j brake or engine brake in there so you will only utilize three of these which will give you room to expand maybe uh, build your own button box and add more buttons okay um and uh, this comes with your USB cable, like I said before. And let me show you real quick. Comes with a bunch of those, okay? These are what you're gonna splice and make your connection with and actually plug into here, right? So that's one input. You're going to have another one and another one and so on and so forth. As many as you want. Well, as many as this allow you to have uh, for different buttons and whatnot. All right. So it comes with all these. Uh, obviously, you're going to splice this and solder them. Uh, but that's that's what it comes with. 
and like I said, the USB cable that plugs into this and goes straight into your computer. Now, the reason why I like the generic USB board is because there's no programming involved. You don't you don't have to be a rocket science uh, or a rocket scientist to be able to utilize this. This is plug and play. So as soon as you plug it into your Windows computer, or maybe even Mac, I'm not sure about Mac, uh, but as soon as you plug it in for sure to your Windows computer, it's going to recognize this thing as a joystick, as a generic joystick board. And all you got to do is go into your game and program it as such. Uh, choose the drop down menu over at uh, ATS or ATS, you know, generic USB board, and assign the buttons to it. That's simple. Uh, if you get an Arduino board or uh, something else of that nature, uh, you got to somewhat know a little bit of programming uh, to be able to actually run the program and tell each buttons what to do and so on and so forth. So this is the easiest route, all right? USB joystick generic board. Uh, they're 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, probably even eBay. I did, like I do all, most of my shopping on Amazon. So boom. So 30 plus 10, that's 40. Okay. Then another thing you will need is a switch for your splitter. Okay. Now the switch for my splitter, I'll show you the old one I had. Actually, I'll show you the new one. My micro switch. All right. So let's open this up. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I can. Please. All right, let's do this. Can't grab it. I don't have anything else. All right, so let's build this back. Okay, now this is a little micro switch. Okay, and it's it's almost like the little micro switches you find on your inside your mouse for your mouse button. This is a little longer than usual because I want to try some different. This is the old one I had in there, which is a little short ones, as you can see. It's the same thing. All right, but it's a little shorter one. Um, but basically, you push this, and it makes the little clicking sound, and that's it. And this switch is normally open, meaning there's no signal going to it. As soon as you push the button, it closes the uh, the loop, and it sends the signal out. And I'm telling you this because you're gonna need one that's gonna be normally open, and then for your paddle shifter for the front. Uh, pedal shifter for your pedal for the uh, low and high range you're gonna need a normally closed button a little, a little bigger but um, we have more room to play with for that button than we do for this one and I'll show you once we get inside that thing um, so normally open means that normally when you're not pushing the button there's no signal going through it uh, I'm sorry um, normally when when the button is not pushed is closed, meaning the, the loop is complete and, and uh, the signal is going through it. When you push it, it opens, all right, and it stops that signal from going through. The reason why we need it uh, the other way around is because when, you, when we install this, and I'll show you where it's going to get installed, when your pedal is down, it's going to push the button, closing the loop, uh, opening the loop, I'm sorry, thus far not sending a signal when we switch up right it's gonna close the the loop and and uh um I'm, I'm yeah close the loop and send a signal saying that we are in the upper range so uh, it, it's a little complicated even when we just explain it but it's backwards it's back from, backwards from a from a normal button that when you push you send a signal when you're not pushing you're not this is the other way when you're not pushing the signal is being sent when you push it it stops sending the signal that simple okay so these two buttons were i got it written down right here uh so this either one or the other but this one was like a buck 50 and this one was like a buck 20. so when you do all the math this is really all you need this uh the, sh the shifter knob the board and two buttons right that came out to 42 exactly you know 4270 and that's rounding up so less than 50 bucks now if you want a jaybreak you will have to get another button and you can get a momentary button something small that be able to fit on the side and this is what i got and this is this is a same very very cheap probably another buck for this so even when you was to get to put to take this onto the to the final bill you're still spending less than 50 bucks so there are three buttons aboard uh, sorry, abort and your shifter knob. So, like I said, less than 50 bucks. Now, 
let's put this stuff aside and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about as far as what you're going to need to be able to accomplish this job. Put this back in there so I don't lose it. All right, now, I'm gonna go over some of the stuff that's that's good to have, but you really don't need, all right? First thing, first is a multimeter, all right? Multimeter is always useful to be able to read out wires, find out if uh, you can actually, you know, test if the switch is working by, um, you know, putting this onto the wires and, and operate the, the lever and see if it's sending a signal. Um, before you even plug it into your computer, because if you're wiring something wrong, you could you could damage your USB ports and all that good stuff. So you might want to uh, check it. Now this is very simple. It's either on or off, so you're not putting any power into it. So you shouldn't you shouldn't cause any damage to your system. Uh, but like I said, multimeter not required, but always good to have. Okay. Another thing that's not required but it's good to have is a heat gun. Hit gun is good for your, uh, your shrink, your, uh, uh, shrink tubing. Okay. Um, and, and I, I like using, uh, shrink tube, um, uh, instead of, uh, uh, electrical tape because electrical tape gets sticky and all the good stuff. You, you slide this onto the wires, you hit it up and it shrinks and that's it. You're done. So that's what I use. Uh, you can use electrical tape if you need be. Uh, but uh, shrink wrap or heat shrink uh, works a lot better. And in order to be able to shrink this, uh, the optimal way of doing it is your heat gun. But if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, people do it with a lighter uh, and, and it works just fine. I like using my heat gun. I have it. Why not? Right? Like I said, optional. Um, what else we got that's optional? I think uh, that's uh, that's about it for the optional part. Uh, now, in order for you to be able to glue those switches inside there, you're gonna need either either the following: a nut glue gun, okay? Which um, it's not something that everybody has uh, laying around, but either a nut glue gun or a stick of super glue. All right. Stick of super glue should do. Uh, all you're doing is gluing that stuff in place. Um, I used the glue gun last time. I'm thinking about using um, uh, either um, super glue this time or a combination of both to make sure that stuff stays in place because I don't want to be tearing apart this thing again if anything comes loose. I want to do it and, and be done with it. So, yeah, either hot glue gun or super glue to be able to glue those things in place. Uh, because the switch is going to have to get glued in place, all right? That's stuff that you need, okay? We we already went over the optional stuff. Now you need that stuff. Uh, what else? You're, you definitely need a soldering iron, all right? The optional part about the soldering iron is everything that comes along with it, like the stand, which you can, you have your little alligator clips, which makes it easy to for you to solder wires, hold them still and whatnot. It's got the little cleaning sponge. Um, I got the little uh, cleaning wire here. Uh, with uh, with this, you're gonna need your um, uh, petroleum base paste and some soldering wire. Okay, not a whole lot. You know, it's a couple of small wires. Um, I have more, but this is all I need for this particular job. Um, this is stuff that, like I said, really all you need is um, a soldering iron wire. And soldering paste is always good. A lot of people don't use it, but to, soldering paste makes the job a lot easier. The other stuff is optional, okay? Yeah, um, but if you have a soldering iron and you don't have this stuff, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you kind of need to have this stuff to be able to solder and clean your tip and all the good stuff. Otherwise, your tip is not going to last a whole lot long. And, you know, I'm not really good with cleaning tips. That's why my tip looks all messed up. But, yeah. So, that's that one. Or soldering put this aside what did we not go over oh wire stripper and or a little pair of uh, wire cutters all right this will do as well you can uh, you can use these to strip or cut wires or you can use you can be it's a little rusted but <laughs> it, it still works 
you can use this to be the strip of cut wires as well. This is easier because it's got all the different gauges right here. You just grab the wire, pull it, and strip it. All right. Like I said, you don't have to have this one. Uh, you can just do it with a little uh, pair of wire cutters, and it'll work just fine. And the other thing you will need is a screwdriver. All right. I got uh, I got many, many, many screwdrivers, but uh, this is all I need. It's got all the tips I could possibly want. It's got your flat on this side. Uh, your Phillips on this side, and this is the smaller side, and this is seen a lot of abuse. And uh, this one is the bigger side, which is again flat, and your uh, Phillips. Um, yeah, and this works just fine for what I need to do, okay? So <clears throat> I think that's about oh, yeah, another thing that you must have. Either of two things. You can do the job with a Dremel if you have the required tips and everything that you need. Or a drill. Alright, either or should work. Uh, like I said, for the Dremel you need to have the tips that you, that you might need to be able to expand a hole or drill a hole. The, the drill is probably going to work, work much better for some of the stuff that we need to do, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Drill is preferred. Dremel uh, should work as well, okay? Um, so let's put that aside. Obviously, with the drill, you're going to need some tips, okay? Um, variety of sizes. Don't have, doesn't have to be anything that break the, breaks the bank. Uh, and again, um, before we go on with this project, I do want to say that there's one thing again. I want to be able. I want to be able to get this through to you guys. If all you need to buy is this, the three buttons, and the board that comes with the required wires, you're good. Okay, you're gonna spend less than fifty bucks, guaranteed, because that's what I spent less than fifty bucks. If you need to buy all the other stuff that you need soldering iron drill drill bits soldering wire uh soldering paste um glue um and, and, you know uh, wire strippers or or even wire cutters you know screwdrivers if you need to go out and go and go buy all this stuff you're gonna spend a bunch of money so um i mean in this day and age um i can't well i, I really shouldn't say that but like people like myself um, I've had this, this stuff for, for years, you know, because I'm, I'm all into making my own stuff, working on my cars, working on my motorcycles, you know, rewiring stuff, uh, turning stuff apart. That's just what I am. That's just what I do. Okay. And, and it's my professional life as well. That's what I do. I'm a, I'm a mechanical engineer in, in the, in the United States Navy. And that's what I do. So that's why, um, I'm mechanically inclined and, and, you know, I just enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So I have... You know thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of tools in my garage and that's why i'm able to do some of the stuff that i do spending very little money so like i said if you need to go out and buy a starting iron it's going to cost you 50 50 or 60 bucks uh you're going to need to go buy a screwdriver maybe another you know five bucks and now you're talking you're going to spend over 100 bucks just to be able to perform this to do this this task okay so if you gotta go out and do that i was i would highly suggest that you go and find on eBay or Amazon somebody that's already selling this thing if you want it and pay the 160 bucks for it because you're going to spend more if you try to do it yourself and you don't have the tools and you need to go out and buy those tools, okay? Um, so yeah, having said that, let's go ahead and uh, get going with tearing this thing down. All right, first thing you need to do is you need to pop this cap open. Very easy, uh, you know, you can use a screwdriver. Uh, some people have nails, you can use your nails. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just stick the screwdriver down here, poop that, bam, and you just pop this thing open. All it is is a cover that's pressure fitted in there, and that's it. All right, and put that aside. Always have a good good place where to put all your hardware screws and stuff like that so you don't lose it. Especially when we go to open this, there's very, very small parts that you need to, you know, keep track of and you don't want to lose. Um, not too many of them because we're not going to go as far as I did the first time and I'll, sh and I'll tell you guys exactly what I mean by that. Um, <clears throat> but as soon as you pop that cap open, right, and you remove it, 
you're gonna have right here two screws two Phillips screws all right we're gonna go ahead and remove those screws very simple okay Try to do this as fast as possible. You know, all the other stuff like the soldering and the drilling and the grinding and all that stuff, I'll do it offline uh, so that the video can go on for days. All right. And uh, because, uh, and, and I'll, I'll explain you guys exactly what I did. All right. All right. So screw out, keep pressure on this. It's got a little spring on underneath. And I'll, like I said, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. As soon as, as we pop this open, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to try and take this screw out. There you go. All right. Now, when you pop this open, um, there is a little, a little ball, a little metal ball and a spring that does this clicking. Okay. It makes this click. What I, what I do usually is I keep this down right, like this and I just try and take the knob off just like that all right so the knob came off there's nothing in this it's just a piece of plastic now this right here i'm keeping pressure on <clears throat> underneath this you're going to find a little ball bearing and a little spring so carefully very slowly lift this up sometimes stuff might get stuck to each other because there's grease in there all right and when you lift this up I notice how i held this in place this is just a little rubber piece um, that makes uh, this move a lot, you know, smoother or whatnot. That little thing in there, a little metal piece in there, it's got a little uh, hump on it that makes that ball click on one side or the other. And right there is the little ball I'm talking about. So carefully set this aside, okay? And then carefully, what I do is I'll just turn this upside down. That way I have a little, little thing here. Um, get the ball bearing drop it in there so you don't lose it and inside there where the ball bearing was is a little bit of spring i like to take stuff out because i don't want to lose it all right so i'll take this out just like that that is the spring and put it right there with your ball bearing okay that's that all right now the top is removed now it's the guts for the guts all you need to do is take that screw out um I don't remember if this came already taken taken apart, but if it's, it's if it's all put together, you're gonna have a screw in the front and one in the back. I just have the one in the back left for now. I already took the one in the front off, so let's go ahead and take that screw out. It's a little short screw; shouldn't take no time at all. All right, and I'll show you guys the what the inside mechanism looks like. All right, there's that screw again. I'll drop it in that little cap that way I don't lose it. And this comes right out. All this is. All this right here is it's it's a it's a little it's a plastic cover. That's it. All right. That's that's it. Very simple. Let's put that aside. Now this is your own mechanism for the paddle and where the airlines get hooked up to for the roll truck and all that good stuff. Um I've already used this in the past. I had it already all wired up and ready to go. Um this right here, as you can see, it is a hole that's that's usually not there. I drilled that hole inside there already, uh, previously, and this is where my wires are going to go, going to go through. Okay, the wires are going to go through here. They're going to come out that little hole that was already present, threaded hole for the airlines. So I utilized that hole already that was in the bottom right here. All I did was drill a hole on the top. And when drilling this hole on the top, you need to make sure that it's not in any way where it's going to interfere with the movement of this. Okay. So, um, look at it, you know, uh, this is going to sit like this, like so, right? And when this moves, it's only going to move this much. So as you can see where my hole is, it's not interfering with the movement of this, uh, splitter. Okay. Very simple. So a lot of people take this apart. I, when I, when I did it the first time, I took it apart and there's a, a lot more springs and ball bearings and everything else that you need to deal with, which you don't want to deal with. Okay. But the way I did it last time, instead of having the backward switch that operates backwards, I, in order for me to be able to achieve 
the upper wrench I needed for the button to be pushed when this was up. And see how this moves right here? It goes down. So I needed a button to be underneath that inside to be able to push the button and be in the upper wrench. Now the way it's going to be is when I'm in the lower wrench, this button is going to stay on top right here and it's going to get pushed just like this and it's going to open the loop, not sending the signal out. When I'm in the upper wrench, it's going to close the loop and send the signal saying, okay, he's in the upper wrench. All right. Very simple. So I'm able to not take this apart and mess with anything of that stuff inside because it's a pain in the butt. Okay. So you want to get a normally closed switch for that. Um, and I'll show you how we're going to place those, which is a lot easier. All right. I did this the hard way the first time I'm trying to explain you guys. Uh, I already went ahead and opened it and uh, I'll show you exactly the switch that I had inside there is actually right here somewhere. Boom. There it is. It was all, uh, I glued in there and it was inside there underneath, you know, you got to open this up and you got to look at it. I grinded a whole bunch of metal out of there to be able to place this switch in the right spot. And when this went down, it pressed that little button and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the functionality of it is simple. It's just getting the job done inside there is extremely tough. So I'm not showing you that way. I'm showing you guys the easy way. All right. Uh, having said that, the only thing that you need to do with this is drill a hole to be able to, to pass, to pass the wires. And if you're wondering, if you're looking at it like this, where the pedal is right in the front, you just look at it, you know, directly behind the pedal a little bit to the right. That's the perfect spot to put the hole in. Okay. That's what I have it. It doesn't interfere with nothing. You can use that if you want, or you can put it somewhere else that you might find better. Uh, if you wish to, but that's, if, if you drill the hole right there that goes straight through and comes out of the bottom to be able to have your wires come out the bottom, you're going to be safe because I've already done it and it works. All right. So that's the only thing that you got to do with this. Obviously I don't have to do it because I've already drilled the hole in it and, uh, this, this pretty much is ready to, to go. All I got to do is free the wires up in there. Um, yeah, and that's it. Now, as far as uh, for the wires is obviously this comes with it, comes with these wires, but they're not long enough. What I did is I had, you can either do this with a USB cable laying around, uh, an extra USB cable that you might not need anymore, or you can do what I did. I, I add a, an extra Ethernet cable, which is great because it comes with all the different colors. So you can distinguish exactly which buttons you want to plug everything to. And I stripped the Ethernet cable and I got the wires out of it and they're perfect for what you need to do. They're nice and small. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I didn't spend any money on that cable. I had it laying around. I'm pretty sure everybody's got an extra Ethernet cable or USB cable that they don't use anymore laying around. They can utilize the wires out of that one. Um, that's what I did. Okay. So zero money for the cable. This comes with the, uh, with the joystick pad that I was telling you about. And all you need to do is cut this, splice them and solder them to each, you know, three of them to each, uh, signal. Again, I have three sets here. One is for your, uh, wrench, one is for your splitter, one is for your, uh, for your engine brake. All right. Uh, so I'm going to fit these wires up through this, right. And they're going to come out the top, not all three sets of them, because like I said, one set is going to be for your engine brake. Engine brake is going to be below that. So you only need to send up two sets for the range and the splitter. That's it. All right. So that's the wires. I, I've already started these because like I said, I, I've already used this before. I already had it set up to uh, work with my uh, machine. Uh, all I'm doing is, is redoing it, but I'm utilizing the same wires that I already had. Um, so that's that one. This doesn't have to be extremely long. It's just got to go from your, uh, um, shifter knob to your board. Okay. And, uh, this board I have it, uh, you can either shrink wrap the whole thing or you can put it inside a little box, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, I have it inside a box and it's hanging on the side of my rig, you know, and it doesn't even bother me at all. You know, like I said, you could buy the little bitty micro Arduino board if you know how to program it and stick it inside here somewhere. Um, but this is much easier for me and this worked. So that's what I used. All right. Now.
now that we have this done now uh, we need to work out your buttons placement okay first thing first is the button for your pedal shifter or pedal shifter your uh, upper and lower wrench pedal and that's gonna be like we said before this button right here now if you look at this we need this to be for the button to be pushed when this is down so this button is to be right there touching this thing okay in order for us to achieve that result we need to fit this thing to the middle right here and in order to do that we're going to stick it to an existing hole that's already there we just need to finish it through right we need to make this a little larger so this switch goes through it nice and straight right and then either super glue it or hot glue it in there and solder the wires through it that simple and then the wires come out uh, come up through that um middle hole right there right next to the screw hole I don't know if you can see it yeah right there this little bitty hole right there all right so um once we have the hole completely through it this red button right here is going to stick out from here all right it's not going to interfere with this at all because it's going to be in the middle see not going to interfere with with the movement of this whatsoever okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and uh drill these holes and get this nice and and uh, loo uh um, get the hole nice in there where this button is able to operate without any restrictions and then i'll come back all right guys see you in a bit all right welcome back guys um we are back just like magic uh so what i went and did was like i told you guys before i went ahead and drilled the hole all the way through uh, a little smaller than the diameter of this part of the switch um and then on this side i made it a little i made it to where this actually fits down uh, around halfway through that way when you put it down in there just like so it sticks out the bottom just like that that's all you need just uh just a little bit uh, um, you know almost the whole red cap right there if you buy the same switch to stick out the bottom just like that and that's gonna make your uh, button push just like so and uh, <clears throat> interrupt that signal all right so the idea is this without putting everything back together the idea is this is going to stay right here just like that right and if you can see the little let me see if i can position it to where you can actually see the little red switch all right when this goes up bam it pushes that switch just like that that's it that's all you need i don't know if you guys can see that very very well but i think you can just like that see that's all you need guys right there <clears throat> so what i'm gonna do now is um see and this is sticking up just a little bit just like that enough for you to go ahead and solder your wires in there what i'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna glue it in place and i'm gonna use i'm probably gonna use a combination of both uh, super glue and hot glue as well <clears throat> and then i'll show you a little bit of extra that i'm gonna do to make sure that this is good and secured in place um but I, i'll talk to you guys after i get done with it so again i'm gonna go ahead and glue this thing in place and come right back all right guys we are back it is done the button for our lower and upper wrench is all done it's it's in the uh, in the knob it's not going anywhere we can push on it we can smack it it's right where it needs to be right in the middle perfect it is it doesn't get any better than that um so what i did like i told you guys before i made the hole bigger so that the, the button will fit in there uh and then a little bit of extra peace of mind if you guys want to do the, go this far go ahead i just like i said i just want to do this one time and done all right so i put the switch in there glued it with super glue all right and then it this this little uh piece that i got going across it with with two screws it's two very little tiny screws as you can see i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about this is the screwdriver i use very small screwdriver the screws are probably maybe this long if that 
because I don't want them to protrude to the bottom, obviously, because I have the other paddle down there. Um, that little strap right here, it's going to ensure me that this button is going to stay there and it's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere when, when it gets pushed from the bottom. It's it's there to stay and it's done. One, one and done. It's not going anywhere now. Uh, this strap, I made it with a zip tie. So what I did is I cut a, I cut a little piece of zip tie to length. I put a hole on one side, hole on the other and utilized two screws. I drilled uh, two little paddle holes where the screws were going to be in the nub and I put the screws down. All right. Now the thing is not only glued, but it's strapped into place and it's not going to go anywhere. Make sure you guys have a good shot of it. <clears throat> that button is not going to go anywhere. The only thing I need to do is solder the wires through there. And then uh, feed them through that little hole in the back, which is right there. If you can see the little light, not, not the screw all to the right, but the one in the middle right there. The wires are going to go through here. They're going to come out to the bottom and, and we're done. One and done. Perfect guys. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, that's for this button. So that was really simple. I mean, it, the all process is, is more time consuming than anything else. Okay. You need to spend, <clears throat> you need to make sure you, you are, um, um, taking your time with it. Don't rush through it make sure you're doing it right. Uh, and making sure that you make no mistakes. Okay. So, um, this, it, it's very simple guys. All you need is a little bit of patience and some time and, and that's it. Anyway, so the button is there and it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Now the next piece that we need to work with is that. All right, we need a button for this paddle. Obviously the button for this paddle is done. Like I said before, we can put that aside. We're still working with the, this knob right here. All the work is gonna be done on this knob. The only thing you're doing with this, like I said before, is drilling a hole through so the wires can come out the bottom. All right, so now, like I said, we need to work this out. So this is gonna go right there, right? And we need the button to be pushed when it's in the forward position. All right, it's upside down, but basically like this is your uh, uh, low. And when you go like this, it's high, high gear. All right, you should split in your gears into low and high, not your range. Your range is different. The range is this one. All right. So <clears throat> the way I, I had it before, I had the button over there and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is the button that I was utilizing. Okay, and I'll probably do the same again um, if I can uh, without even using the new button that I got. But this was right here, just like this. And when this went into iron wrench, it pressed the button. That simple. It's that there's really not much to it, guys. It's that simple. I mean, I don't even know how to say this. It's it's extremely easy. Um, so basically you are gluing this switch. Okay. It's already soldered. So really I don't have to do much to it. All I need to do is splice these wires and solder them to the rest of it. I, I cut it earlier because I wanted to take it apart and redo it, but the switch works great. It's soldered. It's got a good solder joint. It's, it works great. Um, so I'm thinking I might just reuse it. Uh, instead of wasting a, a new switch, I could use that for something else. Um, so it's going to get glued right there. All right. And it's going to, this is the function that it's going to make. It's going to press this button. Now I like to do stuff so that I never have to take this thing apart for anything. Kind of like this, you know, it's permanently in there. It's not coming out. It's not going anywhere. Um, basically it would be easier for me to buy a whole new shifter than to take this thing apart because it's super glued in there. It's not meant to come out. Um, <clears throat> I would like to do the same with this, but other than gluing this on there, you know, there's no way it's so tiny. It's so small that there's really no way of me, uh, being able to, um, you know, securing there and there with screws or, you know, straps or whatnot. Um, so the only other solution I have is gluing it as much as I don't like doing that. 
that's the only thing I got now <clears throat> this thing is gonna have four little uh, uh, four little prongs sticking out you only need two you either use two on one side two on the other or alternate and it works the same way okay it's not gonna go it's not gonna um, I'm just checking the joints making sure everything is good and it looks good to me so I don't see any reason for me to utilize in the new switch the only thing I'm going to do is probably cut the tabs that you're not using it's always good to cut them like so gone you don't need it just less stuff you got to worry about <clears throat> same on this side there so that's done so yeah guys I'm thinking about reutilizing this so as I said before we gotta glue this into place right here and then the other wires from the from the top here are gonna go through that hole that I said before and they're gonna come out the same place so we're gonna have two sets of wires <coughs> excuse me uh, coming out coming out of there I really hate gluing stuff down but that's just the only way I could see me possibly doing this I might even uh, rim all that out, they're all a little bigger, that way it's easier to fit the wires through. So, yeah. So, like I said before, just to recap, this switch is done, all I gotta do is solder the wires, and I'll do that offline, okay? I'll solder the wires, I'll fit them through the hole, and they're gonna come out of here. Then what I'll do after I get the wires to come out of here, I'll go ahead and glue this into place, okay? Splice these wires and uh, solder them to uh, to my to the rest of my cable that I got there. Okay. Uh, but the function of this, like I said before, I'm gonna show you one more time, just in case you still have any questions. Whether you put the switch on this side right here, maybe you can. It's it's entirely up to you. Whatever is easiest for you. You can put the switch here. Like the longer switch that I got will probably work on this side. I don't know where the hell is that. That's right here. Let me see. If I put that long switch right there, see, but you don't have enough travel, so you would have to put it like right here, with a little a little gap or whatnot to make it press against this. So the easiest place to put this into is buying the switch that's short, not the long one like this. Okay, not the long one. You don't want the long one. Uh, you'd be wasting a buck fifty of your money. Um, if you want to do it the easy way, okay? So, um, buy the little one, the little tiny one, okay? Either buy it, and again, I don't know if I told you guys before, if you have a, a mouse, an old school mouse laying around the house that you're not using anymore, it's just garbage, this is your left and right switch, all right? For, for your mouse, left and right. Not the middle, you know how the middle has got to click? That's a different type of switch, but your right and uh, uh, your uh, um, right and left click are these. This is exactly where it is. You're just gonna have to unsolder them off that board and reuse them. And it's a, it's a good way of recycling stuff. That's why I never throw stuff away, guys. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's gonna sit right there, just like so. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it. It's gonna sit right there. Give me one second, guys. I just want to make sure that you guys get the whole view of these. All right, it's going to sit right there, glued into place, and this is going to go into iron range just like this. You guys hear that click? It's going to push that button, and it's going to bring us into iron range. Right? And then when you let go, it's back into low. Not range, but uh, splitting the gears, low and I. Okay? So low, button pressed, I. Low, I. That's simple, guys. Nothing to it. And you just need, you barely need to touch that thing for it to work. It's that simple, all right? So I think on the back side right here, it's the easiest way, the easiest way to do it because on this side, you're gonna need a lot more, um, you know, it's possible on this side, but you're gonna need to figure some stuff out and 
you know, make it stick out more and maybe cut this little tab, which you don't want to because it's keeping everything in place. So it's just more work. And to going back to what I was telling you guys before, the red 13 speed knob over here is going to have two little tabs, two little plastic tabs that you need to file off. And when this is up like this, it's going to prevent this from turning. Okay. That's the only difference. So if you end up finding one of these knobs on eBay cheaper with the red thing, you can still utilize that. The only thing you're going to have to do is take this like this, take the stuff out of here and file down those two little uh, tabs that are sticking out that prevent you from moving it into the lower range. Okay. I wish I had one so I could show you exactly what I'm talking about, but unfortunately I don't. Um, but take my word for it. You can still use it. All right. Well, you, you just a, an extra five minutes filing stuff down and making it look like this one. That's all. That's all it takes. <clears throat> all right. So what I'm going to do next, guys, is I am going to wire this and fit the wires through. OK, that way this wires are done. And then I'm going to glue this switch into place right here, solder the wires to it and be done with that. And I'll be back and I'll show you guys what I got. All right. So be patient and I'll be right back, fellas. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So we did quite a bit. Um, our switches for the um, low and uh, high range is done. This right here, low and high range. Good to go. Soldering is done. I went ahead and started the wires, fed them through the little hole in the back. And then when we look at um, in, in, uh, on the inside of this, we have the other switch right here for our um, splitting the gears. There it is. It's a super glued in place. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, always, you know, do a little tuck, tuck test. Uh, I went ahead and uh, tested them with the multimeter, so the signal is good. Um, you need to be careful with this. I almost messed it up myself. With this little switch, make sure you don't get any super glue around the the button otherwise <laughs> you're screwed um, but we got that button we got this button that's your uh, low and high range and uh, gear splitter right there all right so it's golden as I said before you're gonna put this on there and a button gets pushed ever so slightly all right that's that one um, and uh, we're going to put it all together here live. That way you guys see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I also went ahead and did my uh, uh, engine brake switch. It's going to be this a momentary switch right here. It's not uh, um, tight in place yet, but I went ahead and did all the solder joints as well. Um, let's go ahead and put that in place right now. Uh, all it is is very simple. It's a little uh, lock washer, which I'm going to fit through the wires right here. There you go. And your little retaining nut, which I'll fit through the wires as well. So that's in place and it's done. Uh, I already checked clearance. We got plenty, plenty of clearance here for this switch. We should have no issues there. That's going to be a little of a pain in the butt to get this going but we'll we'll get it get it for sure you can only put one finger in there so well, at least I can you guys might have smaller fingers than I do but yeah so we're gonna try and get that as tight and snug as possible let me see if I have a wrench I think I do <clears throat> this is my Stay in office wrench. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in there, but we'll try our best. If not, I'm gonna to have to pause the video. Yeah, it's not gonna fit. I'm gonna to have to pause the video and get a wrench out of my garage. So we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Uh, apologies for that. We are back. Um, we got the switch in. It's tight. Uh, I actually could not get a wrench in there, so I had to get a long pair of needle nose uh, pliers and slowly uh, but surely tighten that knot up uh, down in there. So now it's good and tight uh, and the switch is 
it's not gonna go anywhere and uh, it will function as our engine brake so activate it on activate off activate it on off it's that simple and uh, when I put this on later on uh, you'll notice that I have the clearance I need in there it's not touching main, main thing uh, the, the most important thing here is you need to make sure that it's not touching the metal portion of of that uh, that thing and as you can see, we do have clearance. We're good. Uh, yeah, ever so slightly, but we do have the clearance that we need. And if if at all, um, if it does touch or you end up, you can always bend those little things outward. <clears throat> that way they're not touching. But I don't see the purpose for that because, like I said, we have more than enough clearance in there for it to, uh, to be good. So... This is good. That's done. Let's put that aside, right there, and let's put this thing together. Uh, so our, our two buttons, like I said before, they're wired. They're ready to go. They're not going anywhere. Nice and tight. So what we need to do is we need to put this back together. So this is gonna go in there, and all that good stuff. And the wires are gonna need to get fed through the uh, through a hole that we made previously before we even started. So we'll go ahead and uh, kind of twist up a little bit these wires so they all go in the hole at the same time and we'll fit them right through there nice and slow make sure you're not uh, stripping anything stripping any wires like I say you don't want the metal to make contact and um, cause, a, cause a short circuit or anything of that nature so take your time with this and make sure you're doing it right uh, kind of wiggle in there a little bit it's giving you a hard time but should be fine if you made the hole big enough should be uh should be gravy all right now slowly but surely pull your wires through just like so remember we still gotta put the spring in the bowl right here right don't forget that and we have the spring right here we'll drop that bad boy right in there perfect and we'll get a little ball bearing and we'll put it right on top of the spring. It needs to be right on top of the spring. Just like so. Right now we can leave that like this. That way it's not bugging us. Now, uh, like I said before, just the same way I take it off. I like to put this on top, making sure that the ball is making contact with it. You can turn. Be careful for that not to fall off like it did. It does no worries just put it right back in there and do your thing main main thing like I said is you want to make sure that ball stays in place just like so all right now comes the here comes the uh, the fun part you got to fit the wires while holding all this stuff and it actually worked out pretty well, I don't want to say it too early but All right, we got that in there. Give it a test. Everything looks good there. It's nice and straight. Let's go ahead and drop the screws in there. Like that. I should probably turn this around before I even started. But that's okay. We'll get this screw going here and then we'll do it. As long as we got it end tight and everything is held in place, we should be fine. Careful not to mess the wires up. If you have to just move them aside a little bit, just like that. Fine. Alright, now that that's there, let's set it down real quick and let me let me fix myself real quick. <clears throat> All right, let's get this screw nice and, they don't have to be extra tight. Um, one thing with this is the tighter these two screws are, the stiffer this switch is going to be. So you don't want them to be extremely tight. You still want to be able to move that switch. So that's perfect right there. And that's perfect right there. So there it is. You got the wires coming out the bottom right there. Nice and easy, they're not obstructing anything. 
Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the wires just like that and I'm going to drop a blob of uh, hot glue in there. That way they, they stay a little more secure and and uh, they're not getting yanked or pulled. Even though I don't think we really need that, I'm still going to do it just to take that extra precaution. <clears throat> and then after that, we're going to get this. Fit the wires through here, just like so. You know what? I don't even need the hot glue over there. There's no reason for that. I mean, I, I sh probably should. I'm not being lazy. Bam. Look at that. Now you got all the wires nice and neat. All in the same spot. What you're going to do is you're going to... I'm going to fit them through this hole. You could probably leave them like this. And, and put the uh, shrink wrap around it. So it's all nice and neat. Uh, but I am going to uh, fit them through this hole first. Uh, either, actually not first. Should I do it now? Yeah. One thing you, one thing you want to make sure you do is before you put it all together, and I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna put a screw in the back right here, and then I'm gonna test all the switches, make sure all the switches work. Because once you uh, shrink wrap everything, and uh, um everything is secured you don't want to be taking this thing back apart that's the last thing you want to do is take this thing back apart right after all that work so you put it temporarily together like that you splice the wire at the end you get your multimeter and you operate every switches so let me give you an example before i go offline and, and do a, do them all the way i like to do it is I'll give a multimeter right here. I'll turn it on to the to the beeping, right? So that when when they're touching or when the switch is active, it it beeps, and you can actually see. I don't know if you can see the number. Yeah, you can see the numbers. Right now it's a one. When you have a signal, it turns into uh, zero zero one or zero or triple zeros. I don't know if you can really hear the, the little uh, noise that it's making because it's so low, but yeah. So what I'll do is I'll try, I'll try to at least because I only have two hands. So right now, as you can see, it's a one. There's nothing going through there. All right. The minute we flip the switch, if I can. Boom, there it is. So we know that switch works, All right? So there's there's nothing wrong with that switch. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two, make sure they work, and then I'll be right back, okay? See you guys in a bit. All right, everybody, welcome back. So we are almost all done here. Uh, we went ahead and put a little bit of uh, a dab of super, not super glue, but hot glue in that all the way the wire is a little more secured. I went ahead and put a little piece of uh, um, shrink wrap on there. Uh, just to keep everything nice and nice and uh, uh, together and uh, looking pretty uh, because like I said I'm, I'm I, I want to do this and I'm, I want to be done with it I don't want to come back to it uh, this is all done up here uh, everything is soldered the wires is fed through the switches are all working I test them on them all out so there's no issues there so we can go ahead and uh, put the cap back on just like that perfect awesome that's on looking good um this switch is done also works tested it out we're gonna feed all the wires through here come on now <clears throat> Fit all the wires through like that, like so. Perfect. Put our screw on. What's 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 great about this knob here? I don't even need an adapter. 
the thread pattern that's there screws right into my Fanatec uh, shifter. So no uh, no brainer there for sure. But let's get this screw started. This is not the right screw. I need to find the right screw for the front. Uh, the reason I was using this is because I wanted to go through the hole for my uh, when I used to use my G29. I needed uh, something to uh, secure that in place. But we're just gonna put this on for the time being. Um, not all the way through, but just to uh, keep it in place for right now. Not that we really need to. Uh, the one in the back does a pretty good job by itself. Um, so I think I'll just take it out and uh, just look for the uh, for the right screw. Once I find it, I'll put it in there. But that's that's no big deal at all. Uh, all right, so all the wires there, perfect. Uh, one thing we're gonna do with this wires is we're gonna shrink wrap them. So we're gonna put them all together, just like so. Kind of twist them a little bit that way it's easier for them to go through the shrink wrap. At least try, try to uh, twist them all together the best we can. And making sure we're not messing anything up over there. But they're definitely looking good. So the shrink wrap that we have, which I brought in, is right here. Uh, so I have rolls of this stuff. I always use it, so. But try to cut them the right length because it's not cheap. So we'll try and go about that far down to here because we still need to solder stuff up. So about right there. And we'll cut it just like that. Now comes the fun part, fitting all these wires through the shrink wrap. <laughs> One thing that makes it a lot easier is making sure that the wires are all the same length. So they're not now. I've been working with them. That's why. But we're gonna we're gonna make them all the same length. No biggie there. No biggie. Just like that. And then we'll kind of twist the uh, the very tip of it that way. Trying to make your life a lot easier with fitting these wires through here. That's really all you're trying to do. Um, hopefully this is the right size. Yep. All right. Good. Now you just you're just gonna fit them through here. <clears throat> the, the the more you get in there, the you know the tougher it gets push them through but try your best and this is definitely something that completes the job altogether once they come out through the other end you kind of slowly pull on it making sure that you're not damaging anything again you want to be very very careful okay I'm looking there making sure everything's still good you don't want to pull too hard if you know what I mean And there you go, just like that guys. And then what we'll do is, we'll feed them from a little side hole, right there. Just like that, nice and easy. Always making sure nothing is catching. Making sure you know you fit in from one side and kind of pull in a little bit from the other. Again, after all that work you just did, the last thing you want to do is damage anything. And there you go. See how nice and neat it looks in there? Nothing is going to touch. Nothing is going to touch the shaft. Everything is nice and neat. 
on this side right here now what we're gonna do is uh, I'll do it off uh, offline because it gets a little loud uh, I'm gonna use my uh, um, my heat gun to shrink all this up that's why it's called shrink wrap because it shrinks when uh, when you apply heat to it and it keeps the night the wires nice and tight and together and all that good stuff so I'll do that offline and I'll come uh, and uh, one, other, one other thing I'm gonna do offline is um, install or solder uh, the little plugs to these all three of them okay um, I have a, an idea I'll show you guys here when I come back with all, all when, it, when it's all said and done and yeah so let me do that let me hit shrink this stuff let me uh, let me solder these wires on and I'll be right back and uh, show you guys the uh, almost final product I guess so we'll be right back guys we are pretty much done so I went ahead and uh, um, did all my heat shrink here um, another piece that I did is I put a quick disconnect here because I want to be able to quick disconnect the whole uh, knob assembly and screw it and unscrew it onto my uh, shaft on the um, uh, fan attack uh, because like I said it just screws on there like a normal shifter uh, would or shifter knob would so uh, you don't have to do this extra step you can just solder the, this this wires straight into here uh, without the quick disconnect I had the quick disconnect laying around I used it for my uh, RC planes um, so that's why I went ahead and used it and it's one last thing that I gotta worry about later um, so once this is connected to the board itself I don't have to disconnect it anymore because you don't want to be disconnecting uh, this thing like every day uh, and I do swap knobs quite often between uh, playing a set of Corsa and other type of games so I wanted to be able to to do that and uh, quick disconnect the whole knob uh, without messing with the board so to recap we got our our uh, our knob here uh, Ethan Fuller we do have splitter we do have range we do have J brake right on the side um, we do have our USB joystick board generic joystick board and we do have the provided USB cable that comes with it uh, again the board the USB cable comes with the board and all these uh, connectors for uh, the various uh, functions come with the board as well uh, so at this point we are ready to hook this bad boy up and show you how it works um, show you that I'm not uh, just uh, feeding you some BS so I'll go ahead and uh, well first thing first I'll connect these to the board so we'll go ahead and uh, see what's the best way of doing this uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. yeah again this right here it, I'll show you guys the box that I have it's just uh, <clears throat> used to be uh, this uh, used to be a laser in there or some shit like that but anyway I will be putting this I already have the screws and everything I just need to glue this back down uh, got little two two little piece of basal wood which make it easier to, to glue on there uh, to uh, screw this thing on there so I'll put that on there screw it on the wires will come out from each side that's that's pretty simple and then you close it and uh, you, you have no dirt and nothing get in there uh, and mess this up so that's what I have for this and this as this little hooker here hangs on the side of my my uh, my rig that I have my wheels mounted on my wheel and shifter and uh, uh, pedals mounted onto and it's out of mine out of sight it doesn't bother anybody and that's what I use so if you want to use that you're more than welcome to uh, if not then you can just uh, get a big hitch shrink type deal but then again that's not something you want to do you want to be able to access it uh, as you want to expand uh, your buttons or whatnot so I think the box is probably the best idea for this but entirely up to you so uh, we'll go ahead and connect these we'll start from this side we'll go with one two and three all right we got these three connections done we'll go ahead and connect the shifter to it I keep calling it the shifter but it's a knob anyways you know what I mean so that's connected on there since uh, we're not gonna be putting it on the on the shifter here 
And this is the supplied USB cable that plugs in straight to your computer. So we'll go ahead and put that on as well. It goes right there. Bam. Just like that. We'll move this aside right here. And let me plug this into my computer. And then I'll show you guys how this bad boy works. All right. Plugged in. <clears throat> as you can see, the light... Uh, let me see if I can bring it closer. There you go. Light is on, meaning it's 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 on. The computer's already recognizing it and 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 knows and knows what it is and all that good stuff. All right, let's uh, take a look at the desktop here. Let me uh, make this smaller. Bam! So you can still see the shifter knob. Eat on fooler. Okay, so what you're gonna do is. You're going to go down here and you're going to type in control panel. Bring up your control panel. Bam. Uh, you're going to go to hardware and sound. Uh, device and printers. And find the one that says generic USB uh, joystick, which is right here. You're going to go ahead and right click on it. Game controller settings. And you're going to come up with this. This is the only thing I have plugged in at the moment because my wheel is not plugged in. So you'll go ahead and double click on that. And here you go. There it is. All right, let's take a look at this. Let's start with the uh, J break. Number three, right there. See it? J break. So activate J break, deactivate J break. It's a, it's a quick action button, uh, momentary type push button. Uh, I could have got a little switch, but uh, I, you know, it doesn't make a difference. You push it once and to tune it on and you push it again to turn it off that's really all it is with the uh, with the jaybreak so this button or switch button it would have been the same thing so uh, as far as the wrench lower wrench like this remember we got the uh, reverse button that right now it is down so it's pushing the button up meaning it's interrupting the signal so as you can see there's no light the signal is is off on the screen but when you do this boom number two it's on see so we are the the, <clears throat> the button actually depressed and completed the loop and now we gain the signal going back this way uh you go back into low range and the light is gone that's the way you want that to function just like that when it's down you want that light to be off that's why we had to get that backwards switch and it works flawlessly and then you have your uh <clears throat> splitter Bam, there it is, number one. Just like that, guys. Again, flawless. I am pretty uh, happy that I went ahead and uh, did this with you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and bring up uh, ATS and I'll show you guys how to set it up on ATS. Oops, sorry about that. All right, let's go ahead and continue on that. <clears throat> Obviously my wheel and everything is not plugged in, so it's not gonna show up the right way, but I'll show you guys exactly how you would set it up, even if the wheel is plugged in. All right, so you go to, obviously you go to options. You can't see it because my uh, a webcam is in the way. Uh, controls. I really need to move the webcam for you guys to be able to see it. So let me do that. Put that right there. Are we back? All right. So we are in the uh, control options, obviously right here, up top. Um, can't find a good place to put this damn thing. Let's put it right here. All right, let me see if maybe now it's, I can show you guys what I'm talking about. 
all right up here uh you're gonna select the one that says um whatever wheel you got plus uh um keyboard and so on and so forth whatever controls you got but then you're gonna see right here it says generic usb all right so right now that's the only thing plugged in so the only thing that's going to show up is your keyboard plus generic usb joystick all right you're going to go down to where the shifter is obviously everything is missing as i said before but the only thing you need to worry about is this last two so this one is going to be your wrench this one is going to be your splitter so you would do this select that come up to your wrench boom it knows what it is. So now we have that button. That one is the splitter. You'll do this. Bam. Now it's a splitter. It's that simple. All right, guys. Um, and I'll show you guys here in the truck as well. But anyways, uh, actually, I can't even show you guys in the, in the truck because my uh, wheel is not connected. But you, you get the point. Uh, and then you want to go over here. And for the engine brake, you have your engine brake and your engine brake toggle. Now, because it's a momentary button, you want to use the toggle, not the, not this one. This one I'm gonna go ahead and assign because that's not a thing anymore for me. This one you would have used the engine brake one. You would have used if you had a normal switch, uh, kind of like the one I had before on there, which I don't even know where it's at. I would show you. Uh, not an off switch on off then you would use that but since we have a toggle we're going to use engine toggle we're going to click on there and we're going to select it so now every time i press it when i press it one time it's going to activate the engine brake and it's going to stay on until i want it off i'll press it again and it'll turn it off that simple that simple fellas that's uh really all there is to it guys Well, that pretty much concludes the uh, DIY uh, on the uh, Eaton Fuller uh, shifter, Eaton Fuller 18 speed shifter. Um, again, this can be used uh, on um, ATS, ETS, uh, whatever you want. Uh, it's, it's, it's really for both. Uh, I use it on both. Um, it doesn't make a difference. Really, the only difference is in real life um the shifter is going to look different but then it's the functions are all the same you're going to have your range and your splitter and your j brake um in europe the j brake is not used that much it's probably never used at all really um you know real drivers they don't they don't use it unless they really have to an emergency or whatever it is used a lot more in, in the states than it is uh on american trucks than it is in european trucks uh but it's a good thing to have in european trucks as well like i said emergency or whatever um but yeah guys um i hope this uh um helps you guys any way possible um and saving a little bit of money and maybe um learning how to do some stuff on your own um you know i, I i'm i wasn't born with uh, uh knowing how to do everything i i learned by um uh, you know uh actually doing it you know experimenting and doing it and getting in there and, and actually trying to uh you know researching and and making it happen so um as you can see as you saw it's not hard it's just uh you gotta have patience and you gotta have time um and and that's it really um and you gotta have a little bit of know-how as far as uh soldering uh is concerned and that kind of stuff um again to recap the whole thing all right uh a few bucks for the switches uh, uh about uh what was it thirty dollars for the for the actual shifter knob ethan fuller uh another 10 bucks for the uh generic joystick board um in total let's round everything up to the highest um decimal here and we'll say that we spent fifty dollars okay with fifty dollars you're gonna have something that sells on the internet for under six dollars and more depending on what you get okay um so i think it's a good deal uh especially uh the caviar to all this is you gotta have the tools that you require 
to be able to do this. Uh, and the, the most important thing really is um, a soldering iron, uh, you know, miscellaneous uh, uh, wire cutters or uh, splicers uh, or whatnot, um, solder, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, glue. Um, but, you know, if you, like I said, you know, if you got to go out, and it doesn't have to look as pretty as this, all right? I made it, you know, I made it look really pretty because it's something that I want to last and I want to, I use quite often. So, um, you know, you can use uh, electrical tape on your wires, uh, whatever. But when I do something, I'm, I'm, I'm OCD. Uh, stuff has got to look perfect. Um, that's why the first time I did it, it was a little rushed. I wanted to get into the game and I wanted to do it. I kind of did a half-assed job on it. Uh, that's why I went ahead and redid it. Um, and, uh, while I was redoing mine, um, I thought about, you know, what best way to show everybody how to do this, uh, and maybe save them a few bucks. Um, honestly guys, uh, uh it, it's not hard. All right. Like I said, if you already have all the tools or your dad has the tools in his garage, have him help you out. If you need help, uh, by an adult that maybe, uh, already knows how to do all this kind of stuff and it's very simple very very simple um if you have a radio shack close to you you can probably pick up most of this uh, switches that i used in there uh if you don't you can go on ebay or amazon and you can buy you can buy by the dozen uh, and they're not expensive at all uh, like i said they're probably cheaper on amazon than it is to go into a radio shack and, and picking this stuff up um, I picked it up myself for uh, the switches. I picked it up at Radio Shack. That's why probably I spent a little bit more. But usually you can pick up like this. This switches right here. You can pick up like a ten pack, you know, for you know for nothing, you know. So um, if you if you're willing to wait, go ahead and order the stuff online. You're gonna save a few bucks at the end of the day. Uh, if you don't want to wait, order the shifter online because you're not gonna be able to get it any, anywhere local unless there is like a truck shop somewhere close to you where they have them readily available, but they're not going to be cheap at a truck shop, uh, just so you know. Um, or, uh, you know, always eBay and Amazon is my main two um, places I go to, to to shop for, you know, random stuff, whatever, whatever the case might be. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions about this all project, uh, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'll be, I'll, I'll be sure to answer any and all questions that there is. Um, if you, uh, whatever the questions might be, just drop them in the comments and I'll answer them. Okay. Um, and, um, if you, if there's another DIY type videos that you would like to see, let me know what is it that you would like for me to make and I'll look into it. If I can make it and I'm willing and able, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to do it. Um, other than that guys, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so because the um, channel is expanding. I'm introducing stuff on a daily and you're going to enjoy it if you're part of this family. All right. Aside from that, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you guys are doing great and we'll see you all next time. All right. Peace out.